Hello, and welcome to Indigo Studio. Today, I'm going to show you how to create interactions. The first thing we need to do is create a new screen, as well as pick the viewport we are going to work with. In this case, we will recreate an iPhone experience. So let's pick the iPhone 5 viewport and make a prototype in no time. Every screen in Indigo Studio starts with its default first state called Start. You can see it up here in our combo box, where you can click to display the Mini Interaction Explorer, where it shows the representation of our state with a box. You'll notice how this mini panel will be useful while we make other interactions on our screen. Let's start dropping some elements to our screen, for example, a header and a list. This way, you'll end up with a recognizable screen with no effort. The first interaction we'll add is to a button in our header. I'll simulate an addition mode to this list. So let's drop a button. You can see that Indigo has predefined places to stack your button and make your life easier. And add our first interaction to our first new state. Let's click on Add Interaction. Since we want to tweak the screen we have right now, let's pick Change This Screen. We'll make the Edit button to fire the addition mode, as well as ending the addition mode on the new state. So selecting this toggle back option, we'll be able to click on the same button and go to the new state as well as go back to the previous state without adding any other interaction on the new state. Now let's pick new state and you are ready to tweak your new state. The first thing you'll notice is that the state is created on our mini interaction explorer and you are a step on it. You are not on the start state anymore, so start changing your screen as you want. We can add some delete buttons for the addition mode pretty quick. The easiest way is hold Alt and press click on the screen. You'll see an input field where you can type the control you want. Now I want some icons. The writing icon, some option will be displayed. Some of them have the iOS tag, so let's choose one of those. Choose the one you like, and that's it. I'll press Control D to duplicate, and then align and distribute them to match the layout. Since I want some animation on this new state, I'll tweak the timeline a little bit to add half a second to each element. Let's see our mini interaction explorer and go back to our start state, clicking on the first box. You can notice that the naming is based on the action you made, as well as the name of the element clicked. For example, our new state is based on a tap action on our edit button so our state is called automatically Tapped Edit. Let's try our prototype so far. To see the interactions, you can click on the Highlight button, and it will show what the elements are that has an interaction on it. Let's click the Edit button. The state changes with the animation we added. And clicking on the same button, we go back to the previous state. Pretty easy, right? Now what we're going to do is add more interactions, but without adding new states, instead adding a new screen. Let's pick an element to add the interaction to, and instead of modifying the current screen, we'll pick Navigate. We'll see two options right there, one to navigate to another screen, and the other to open a URL. In this case, we'll try the first one. Right now, we don't have any other screen than the one we are creating, so just write the name on the field and create right there a new screen. Let's skip for a second this new screen and come back to the one we were making. As you can see, the interaction was made and we have a couple of options. For example, the transition we prefer from this screen to the new one. There are a couple of them. In this case, I'll use the flip one. If you click on the element, now you can see the interaction. Let's see what we have on the mini interaction explorer. You can notice there is a new box with a different color. That means that it's not a screen change, instead it's a navigation interaction. Let's go and design our new screen. Indigo Studio gives you several elements predefined so you can make your prototype fast in no time. For example, you can drop the icon list, as well as create a personalized list by your own, adding the number of elements you want very easily. After you finish your design, we'll add a button to go back to the previous screen. Click on the element, go to Add Interaction, Navigate, and click on Screen in Project, so you can pick the previous screen to navigate to. Tweak the transition animation if you like, and that's it! Now go to the previous screen to see our interaction's result. 
The Mini Interaction Explorer, as well as the Full Screen Explorer, allows us to see clearly the flow we built for the user. You can see our first screen, the interaction we made from the Edit button to a new state, that's why it's called Tapped Edit, as well as the navigation to a new screen. So let's give this prototype a try. Let's see where our interactions are. Okay, we can try our previous interaction, and now let's try the new one, navigation to a new screen. Great, that's our flip transition effect, now let's go back. Looks good, and as you can see, it took a few minutes to represent a realistic navigation on the prototype. The last thing I want to show you is how to add an interaction in order to direct the user to a URL. It's pretty easy too, and as you might remember, is right there in the navigation options. Let's select the element we want to add the interaction to, navigate, and then select the URL button. Just type it, save it, and that's it. You can check your new box on your Mini Interaction Explorer, and if you maximize the Interaction Explorer, you can see the different interactions we created in our prototype.